हेलो एवरीवन टुडे टॉपिक इज वीएलएसआई डिजाइन फ्लो बिफोर यू डिसाइड टू मेक अ करियर इन वीएलएसआई और यू डिसाइड टू चूज अ पर्टिकुलर ब्रांच इन वीएलएसआई इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड द वीएलएसआई डिजाइन फ्लो बिकॉज मोस्ट ऑफ द जॉब्स नॉट मोस्ट एक्चुअली ऑल ऑफ द जॉब्स इन वी एल एस आई आर गोइंग टू स्प्रिंग फ्रॉम दिस वी एल एस आई डिजाइन फ्लो इट सेल्फ दिस डिस्क्राइब्स द एक्चुअल प्रोसेस ऑफ डिजाइनिंग योर वी एल एस आई चिप्स लेट सी द स्टेप्स द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज स्पेसिफिकेशन एंड आर्किटेक्चरल डिजाइन वॉट इज डन यर इज वी डिफाइन द डिजाइन स्पेसिफिकेशन For example, my design will support seven gigahertz frequency. We outline the intended functionality and features, and overall design architecture. For this, it is required to closely collaborate with all the stakeholders to ensure that the end product actually aligns with the intended purpose. at this point at this stage the architects don't think about how they will implement the design they just want to get the specification and architecture done the next step is high level design specification in the previous step the architectures were not sure how they will implement the design in high level design you need to get into the details of how you are going to implement this design this is very crucial step for further analysis and optimization of your architecture in this step we will convert the abstract architectural design into a detailed design specification this document serves as a reference for rtl design engineers to implement the actual design once you have the high level design specification ready we need to design the actual hardware which is done in the step called as rtl design in this step your hdl high level design specification is manually converted into rtl design by using hdl which is hardware description language the current trend is everyone is using system verilog to do rtl design and in order to assist you to code this rtl design you have cat tools once your rtl design is ready it means your design code is ready in terms of the hdl hardware description language which is system verilog the next step will be design verification we'll get into why i have highlighted it in green um we'll get into that but first let's understand what is this design verification it is a step where you verify the functional correctness of a design it can take various forms like functional verification ip subsystem soc cpu these are different levels it can be emulation where you create a software model of the design and run it on a emulation platform like zebu tool there is fpga prototyping which means you run fpga you run your soc design in an fpga why is fpga prototyping needed because the fabrication process is very very costly before the chip goes to fabrication i want to implement my design in fpga 
so that it creates the actual hardware inside FPGA. And then I can run the test on that FPGA to ensure that when the hardware is designed, it functions as expected. Another very trending form of design verification is formal verification, which is a very powerful technique to verify your design and to generate all possible scenarios to verify a particular design. Now, if you find any bug during design verification, RTL design engineers will correct that bug and then again you can verify your design and until your design is bug free, this process keeps on repeating. All these steps are a part of front-end VLSI. What does front-end VLSI mean? It means till now, whatever design I have, it is just in the form of code. I don't have any physical implementation of the design as such. Physical implementation means layout or logic synthesis. I don't have anything as such till now. That's why it is called as front-end VLSI. Now, if you check VLSI jobs, most of the jobs available in market are in front-end VLSI. And around 50% of total VLSI jobs are in design verification. That is why I have highlighted it. Because it seems to be a very good branch to start your career in VLSI as a fresher. Since there are a lot of job opportunities in this domain. Now we also talked about most of the job roles, actually not most, we also said it is all of the job roles, spring from this VLSI design flow itself. Let us understand what are the job roles which can come out from this front-end VLSI. A person who does specification and architectural design is architect. The people who do high level design specifications are also architects along with design leads. Design leads means some senior people who have a lot of experience in RTL design. They collaborate together to compose this high level design specification. A person who does RTL design is called as RTL designer. People who do design verification. Now, as we said, this has a various forms. So the job roles which come from this can be SOC, design verification engineer, IP verification engineer, functional verification engineer, FPGA prototyping engineer, formal verification engineer, emulation engineer. We also talked about these steps are being assisted by CAD tool. A person who designs CAD tool or we also call it as EDA tool. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design. EDA stands for Electronic Design Automation. A person who works on designing and verifying these tools is called as CAD or EDA engineer. This is another job role which comes in the front-end VLSI. Now we are done with front-end VLSI. Let us understand back-end VLSI. In back-end VLSI, we take RTL design and we perform logic synthesis on this. We discussed that until front-end VLSI, I don't have any physical design. Now we are going to get into it. In logic synthesis, the design is translated into an implementation in terms of logic gates. It is done using synthesis tools. Once your logic synthesis is done, we move to physical design. In physical design, I am going to place the gates and route the interconnections to meet timing and area constraints of my design. In this step, I create a layout 
that describes transistors and interconnections between them. It is also done with the help of CAD. Once your physical design is done, we will move to layout verification. In this, your physical design is verified using simulations to ensure that it meets the design specifications. This step minimizes the risk associated with design failures. Now, if there are any problems found in layout verification, then we will do redo this physical design step in which we had placed the gates and done the routing between them to meet the timing and area constraints. We will redo this and then again we will do layout verification until your layout verification is bug free or it is completely clean, it meets the design specification. Until then, we will keep repeating this physical design step. Once your layout verification is done, we move on to fabrication. In fabrication, the final design is sent to the fabrication lab for chip manufacturing. Physical ICs are made with the help of your layout specs. Once your fabrication is done, it means your chip is manufactured. But this is not the end of your design flow. We will do post silicon validation. In this, your fabricated chip is tested to ensure that it meets the specification and there are no manufacturing bugs. In this step, we also use some new VLSI techniques like BFT, we call it design for testability, and BISR, which is built in self repair. Now, let us see what are the job roles which can come out from backend VLSI. People who do logic synthesis can be named as logic IC engineers or logic synthesis engineers. People who do physical design are called as physical design engineers. People who do layout verification are layout engineers. People who do fabrication are fabrication engineers. People who do post silicon validation are post silicon validation engineers. And in this, there are also some techniques which we discuss like DFT. People who do DFT are DFT engineers. Let me summarize quickly so that you gain an insight of design steps and gist of roles which come from it. In specification and architectural design, I define the specification and architecture. A person who does this is architect. In higher level design specification, I create a, a detailed specification which tells me how I'm going to implement my design. Architects and senior designers like design leads collaborate to do this. After HDL, like high level design specification is ready, you implement the code using the hardware description language like system very low. People who do it are called as RTL design engineers. After which we verify that the design is functioning correctly. There are no bugs. The step is called as design verification. Around 70% of total jobs are in front-end VLSI, out of which almost 50% are in design verification. Until front-end VLSI, I don't have the actual physical design, but when I move to back-end, I'm going to have actual physical design. In logic synthesis, we convert the design into gates. In physical design, we route these gates and place them to meet timing and area constraints. People who do logic synthesis are called as logic synthesis engineers. People who do physical design are physical design engineers. Once your physical design is ready, you do layout verification in which your physical design is verified. 
people who do this are layout engineers once your layout verification is done you send it your layout to the fabrication lab for actual chip manufacturing people who do this are fabrication engineers once your chip is ready you do post silicon validation people who do this are post silicon validation engineers i hope this helped you understand vlsi design flow and various vlsi jobs which come from this flow to stay tuned for such technical content on vlsi please stay tuned to sweetie speaks official youtube channel thank you